Hi, this is Ash Whitener. And this is Justin Blinko. And welcome back to Liberty Entrepreneur's Podcast, where we explore how to build freedom through the entrepreneurial process. Our goal is to provide you with the tools and mindset needed to create your lifestyle of independence and flexibility. On December 4th and 5th, we went to Mexico City to interview some of the brightest entrepreneurs in the Bitcoin and cryptocurrency space at the Latin American Bitcoin Conference. We left with a number of amazing interviews, and we're really excited to share one of them with you today. Please help us out by following us on Twitter at Liberty E Podcast and Facebook slash Liberty Entrepreneurs. Show notes with links and contact info to everyone we speak with can be found on our website, libertyentrepreneurs.com. Enjoy the show. Welcome back to the Liberty Entrepreneurs Podcast. Today we have Evan Duffield, founder of Dash. Evan, welcome to the show, and would you give us a brief bio? Yeah, thanks for having me. As a, a bit of background, I come from a, a background of finance, economics, machine learning, and coding. I've, I've been coding since I was 15, so I've always been interested in, in these things. And when I discovered Bitcoin early on, I was captivated by it. And then I, I really wanted to do some lower level exploration of the protocol itself. And so that, that's really why the, the Dash project exists, to, to experiment and, and see what, what we can do to, to fix some of these underlying issues. Yeah, so you got into Bitcoin early and you're a developer, so you were able to dig down and see like what Bitcoin really was and how it really worked. As an entrepreneur, though, you know, a lot of people think, oh, Bitcoin is the one currency, the one cryptocurrency that we're going to need. But as an entrepreneur, you saw weaknesses in the Bitcoin protocol that prompted you to create uh, an altcoin, Dash, right? Could you tell us what some of those weaknesses were and why it, it tempted you to act? I think we should back up a little bit. When I really got into crypto in the beginning, altcoins were looked as uh, you know, like a breeding ground for new innovative ideas that could eventually be merged into Bitcoin. And so I come from that background. I, I thought if I make an altcoin and experiment on these really low fundamental like protocol level things that the Bitcoin system just simply can't do because it's too big. If we come up with something innovative that actually works and we prove that it works, maybe we can benefit the ecosystem as a whole. So give us a bit of background on Dash and like what, what did you see in the Bitcoin protocol that you felt was inferior or, or not where you thought cryptocurrencies were headed for the future? So I, I see a few economic issues. And, you know, these are mostly just issues with scalability. Uh, the first issue that I saw, though, was fungibility. Over time, since Bitcoin has just one-to-one -one transactions, if I send you money, it's on the public blockchain literally forever. If your address is identified on the blockchain, you know just from looking at the blockchain that, that you sent me money. And that, that's a real issue because we want some form of privacy. So that was the first experiment. And then there's some more experiments with scalability. I see an issue with Bitcoin scaling because of the incentive structure of running the, the infrastructure of the network. So for example, the infrastructure is closely correlated with the volume transaction average. As the volume transaction average rises, the infrastructure has always historically fallen. And these two numbers seem to be really tied together. And so we wanted to try a different style of architecture that we call a two-tier network to see if we could provide permanent incentivized infrastructure for the network to live on. Yeah, so tell us about that two-tiered network because this does not exist in Bitcoin currently. Yeah, correct. It's completely brand new concept. And I think the best way to explain it is to think of Bitcoin like a job network. And so on the Bitcoin job network, you get paid from the block reward. And so there's really only one truly decentralized job on the network, and that's mining. And so we added a new job. And we wanted this to be a decentralized job paid for from the blockchain itself because it's literally supporting the currency. And so what we did was split the block reward and require some of it to go to masternode operators. And that's what we call the second class of of employees of, of the currency itself. Right, so basically I can work for Dash and get paid 
wh whatever amount by running a node that supports the network and secures the network. Unlike with Bitcoin, where you know, for the most part, it's altruism for me to run a node. I have to pay for the uptime on my computer. I need to pay for electricity costs. You know, I have to be there to for software upgrades whenever they come along. It's uh, it's quite an obligation that you've got whenever running a Bitcoin node. Whereas with a Dash node, I could get paid by the network. Not only do the miners get paid as the top tier, but me, the node operator, would get paid as well. I think that's very interesting. I think it's really important also to point out that in the Bitcoin ecosystem, originally Satoshi had thought that eventually these full nodes would exist on large server farms. And the way that it's going, it's actually looking like it's going in that direction that he originally thought it would. And I would argue that we should probably try to avoid that. The issue is that as the volume, transaction volume rises on the network, centralization will happen of the full nodes. And then only the largest companies in the Bitcoin ecosystem will have the right profit incentive to run these things. And then they're running the entire infrastructure because who else can afford it? Can you tell me a little bit about how you run the project? My understanding is it's a little bit different. It's decentralized you know, production of everything you're doing. Can you give us some insight? Yeah, absolutely. Essentially, when you have collateralized full nodes, there's an interesting thing that you can do. You can do so many things that you really can't do without collateralizing the nodes. And by that, I mean each of these nodes has a thousand dash that's attached to it, and that's its identity on the network. So that thousand dash has a private key, right? And you can do secure communication by signing that private key. And what we did was we implemented a decentralized voting system. And so you have thousands of nodes that can now vote on the network. So what do you have them vote on? Well, if you allocate some of the reward of the, the block reward, now you can have them vote on things like, what should we spend money on to expand the ecosystem? Uh, should we buy this website? Or should we fly the developers out to speak at this conference? And this is the, the types of things that we're doing on the network. For example, it funded so far three conferences. It funded one in Mexico, uh, one in Netherlands, and then one in January uh, called the Bitcoin Miami conference. And so we feel this is really exciting because it gives a foundation for expanding the ecosystem that's sustainable. Yeah, and it's very entrepreneurial as well. You have created a cryptocurrency and also have the ability to hire people. Unlike Bitcoin, where if you're going to get hired in the Bitcoin space, you need to be hired by a company, right? Maybe BitPay or Coinopult or something like Shapeshift. But with you, you have created a network where you can act as an entrepreneur because you have the ability through the network, how it's structured, the protocol, to pay people like very small employees. I think that's a stark contrast to how Bitcoin has operated the network, the protocol that is, where it's not nearly as entrepreneurial. So in Bitcoin, I see some issues with the, the funding mechanism because really it's surviving off of grant money right now and that's what's paying the developer salaries. Whereas if they implemented a system like we have, they could pay it from decentralized funding, which I, I think would be better long term. And so we're just a test bed of this type of technology. We don't have the same market cap as Bitcoin. We have currently a market cap of about $14 million. And as such, we could do really adventurous things with the protocol, but we can't fund full salaries for developers yet. But if the Bitcoin ecosystem implemented something like this, they could, and they would do really well with it. And do you think the Bitcoin ecosystem could make a change so that they have more of a, a two-tiered structure like Dash does in the incentive basis? The Bitcoin developers are fantastically talented. So I'm sure that they could come up with a variant of this technology that met all of the qualifications that they, that they need. And they can point to us as a test bed, you know, really small test case of the technology to say, you know, at least it works. We know that it works. What do you see as the future of Dash? Where are you trying to bring this to? Is it mostly a test bed or what are the ambitions for the project? We want to create a new type of monetary system built on the second tier. And we want to exist separately from Bitcoin. We, we originally wanted to test some of these lower level functionalities for the foundation of the currency. Now that we have that, we're going to expand on top of it and build something that we call Dash Evolution. 
And so essentially what we're going to do is make a decentralized API that the second tier serves and that allows mobile devices to connect directly to the network in, in a way that's similar to centralized services, except it's completely decentralized and trustless. Let's talk about another pain that I see in the Bitcoin protocol, and you mentioned this earlier, the, the transparency. I know that this is a difference that Dash has where it is offering more anonymous transactions. Can you talk to me a, a little bit about that and about the entrepreneurial mindset that you had to spot that issue and then to try to correct it in Dash? The reason that we value privacy in the Dash ecosystem so much is because eventually it'll be used against the users in the Bitcoin ecosystem. And I see that as a threat. I, I don't want my users' identities being tied to their transaction history and like sold to companies online. And so our implementation of privacy uh, circumvents that by having a mixer directly in, in the currency supported by it so that users can maintain their transaction privacy. So what are you most excited about other than Dash in the cryptocurrency space right now? Oh, there's so much going on in the cryptocurrency scene, it's so hard to even keep up with. Uh, there's Rootstock, which is really neat. Uh, it's actually being worked on by one of the Bitcoin core developers. We have Ethereum, which is a platform that is incredible. And then, you know, there's, there's a million other projects that, you know, I, I couldn't even start to go into detail about. So anyone that's listening and is interested in finding out more or getting involved, how can they contact you and what would you recommend that they start looking into? Yeah, if anyone's interested in the Dash technology or how it works or investing in it, just come over to dash.org. There's a getting started se a section that has tons of information, literally probably 100 pages that you can read and, and educate yourself on it. Thanks so much, Evan. Would you mind giving out some contact details if anyone would like to get in touch with you? Yeah, sure. Uh, my email is evan at dash.org. And yeah, feel free to email me questions or anything. Awesome. Thank you so much for the interview, Evan. We are here at the third annual Latin American Bitcoin Conference, and we appreciate your time. Thanks so much for having me. If you appreciated the show and would like to donate with Dash, jump on over to our website, libertyentrepreneurs.com, and donate using Shapeshift's Shifty button. Thank you so much. <laughs>